Ambonic are one of my favorite retro gaming handheld manufacturers. However, there's one huge issue with every single Ambonic console I've ever come across. And it's something no other content creator seems to be talking about. None of the other channels, none of the other retro gaming handheld channels ever seem to mention this. And, and I think it's massively important. Kick off your shoes and relax your socks while we discuss the big issue with Ambonic handheld devices. Ambonic have made some of my favorite retro handheld consoles to date. The RG405M, which we just recently reviewed, is absolutely brilliant as a retro gaming handheld. Build quality, the metallic finish, the amount of games that it gives you access to instantly, the GameCube and PlayStation 2 emulation, all of these things are brilliant, especially for the price. And if you're approaching the RG405M simply as a retro gaming handheld, it's absolutely perfect. And the same can be said for so many of Ambonic's devices. And this for me is where the issue lies. So many of my fellow content creators, which I highly, highly respect and aspire to have channels that are anywhere near as good as those, unfortunately seem to only ever focus on the retro side of these handhelds. Yes, these devices do exist because of retro gaming. The whole flood of retro handheld emulators, the reason we call them retro handheld emulators is because they're trying to emulate retro consoles. They're trying to bring to the palm of your hands that nostalgia that everybody craves and trying to give it to you in probably one of the cheapest ways you can access it. Getting into traditional retro gaming means you probably have to buy a CRT TV, you'll have to get the console itself and a load of games. And that cost just multiplies the more consoles and games you want to get into. But a retro handheld emulator, you just buy the console and it's good to go. So yes, this is one of, if not the most important part of a retro handheld console. How well does it emulate retro handheld games? But retro handhelds have evolved, they've moved on to become something so much more than just retro handheld emulators. If you compare the Pocket Go with the Retro Pocket 3 Plus right now, they are completely different machines. And retro handheld emulators have two sides. They can provide access to so many more games than just retro games and emulators. They can provide access to Android games and game streaming services, making them as much a modern handheld console as they are a retro handheld console. And I think constantly focusing on the retro aspects of these consoles makes us miss features and areas that these consoles really need to improve on to make them absolute all-rounders. And this is where the Ambonic issue is for me. Ambonic consoles to date have always had the inline shoulder buttons, which I've grown to love and I actually really like the style and the ergonomics of those. But the issue is they are digital buttons, they are not analog buttons. Which means that if you try to use an Ambonic console like an RG405M, an RG505 or any of the other consoles like that for game streaming, it simply can't be done. You can't fully enjoy a game like Forza Horizon using an Ambonic console because it doesn't take input from the R2 and the L2 buttons, buttons which are essential for a game like Forza Horizon and so many other games that are in game streaming services. And this issue isn't just limited to game streaming, it also presents itself in a lot of Android games. Now I do realize a lot of us out there aren't particularly Android gamers, so Android gaming won't be a huge area of concern for retro gamers, but a lot of retro Retro gamers do enjoy modern gaming as well. And so the issue is more of a problem when we're looking at game streaming. And then you might think the problem simply lies in the fact that Ambonic are using digital buttons as opposed to analog buttons for R2 and L2. But that doesn't seem to be the issue because the Retro Pocket 3 Plus, for example, although it does have stacked shoulder buttons, the R2 and the L2 shoulder buttons and the Retro Pocket 3 Plus are also digital. But the Retro Pocket 3 Plus and the Retro Pocket 3 before that, and I think even the Retro Pocket 2 Plus as well can handle game streaming, can handle games like Forza Horizon and provide input to the game streaming system using R2 and L2. Those buttons are recognized. So this implies it's less of a digital versus analog issue. It's more a case of designing how the software works or how the inputs from the controls are translated to the software, which tells me it's probably a very simple issue for Ambonic to fix. But why haven't Ambonic fixed it to date? For the past two years, this problem has been noticeable but it's not been noticeable when anybody ever talks about it. And this is what I think the problem is. Every review we see of Ambonic consoles always focuses on the retro aspects. Can it do GameCube emulation? Can it do PlayStation 2 emulation? What's the aspect ratio like for retro games, positions of analog sticks and all that good stuff, which is highly important to retro games. But no one hardly ever talks about the game streaming capabilities of these devices. And I think we're truly missing a huge area of gaming potential when we ignore those areas. And I think as reviewers, we do the consumers a disservice not covering those areas. I've always been interested in the game 
streaming, streaming capabilities of these devices. And I always try to touch on it in my reviews, but it's starting to become much more aware to me now how many customers out there don't really know what's going on and aren't really aware of the capabilities of these devices and wanna have more information and find out more. And honestly, a lot of them like me as well just want it to be fixed. And I genuinely believe if we talked about it more, if we created more of a fuss about these areas, it would be somewhere that hopefully, I wouldn't say definitely because there's a lot of things we do complain and it seems like either it gets lost in translation or the message just doesn't get all the way out to China. But hopefully we could do our best at least to try and make sure that future Ambonic devices fully live up to the potential of being able to be game streaming consoles as well. Because this for me was a huge letdown in the RG405M. I love it as a retro game and handheld. But one of the things I was most excited about was the change in the analog stick location, which meant I'd be able to enjoy more modern games more comfortably but it didn't really come to fruition because I had no access to game streaming. Now there are other things you could say like, well, the four x three screen wouldn't really work that well with modern game streaming. And okay, that's a good point, but it would be nice to have the choice. And as more and more retro gaming handhelds start coming out, as these start to become more popular and, and higher performance consoles become more affordable for people, we're starting to see more than just the hardcore retro gaming emulation enthusiasts wanting to play on these consoles. And I think that's why I've started to hear so many more people in the comments mentioning issues that they're finding with Android gaming or issues that they're finding with game streaming and, and, and complaining honestly why they don't hear more people talking about it. And hopefully we can start making ourselves heard more on this and hopefully we'll see the differences in future consoles. Until then, I'll continue to keep on checking out game streaming on these devices, even if nobody else does. And if you do want to find out more about how awesome the RG405M is despite its game streaming limitations, then check out this episode right here. Yeah.